So good evening everyone. So today we are doing catastrophic environment and disaster management this week. Today's schedule was for geography. Our faculty is in hospital. So maybe by next week he will be okay. So next week we will do geography. Geography I cannot do. So we will manage this week with environment and disaster management. So written test. All. Come this side if you cannot see, come this side. <coughs> so how's how's it? Not happy. What was the issue? Content was less. What else? As a result came. Kya dekh rahe? So, kisi ko mila? Kya status hai? We were having some students, right? Who were written mains, Rona and all. What is status, you know? No idea. <coughs> Anyway, how was paper? Tell me. Which one? Nuclear energy. First and fourth question. What else? Two questions were very easy. Nuclear and solar. Anyone can do. Rest two question. It was really big deal that time. Glasgow summit. Right now also it's still important, but yeah, that much relevance. Specific question you cannot expect next year. Anything else? How many you are written? Three. Which one you left? Fourth one. Why? Could have guessed right. How many of you how many of you can this much guess that green grid initiative is same as that much you know all then you should have guessed somewhere you can relate with things and what question is asking question is not it is asking purpose and all these things purpose will be anyway same as you can guess after anything else you have just came now, you haven't returned. <coughs> so let's go ahead. Okay. This is our first question. We'll do the same process. What are you doing all these days? Describe the major outcomes of 26th COP of UNFCC. What are the commitments made by India in this conference. So, what are different parts? Tell me. It's very difficult to break down. How many how many break divisions you have done? <coughs> tell me, tell me first. <coughs> outcomes. Outcomes of What next? Yeah. India's commitments. What else? What you included a way forward. Anyone written anything else? Kya kya? Outcomes go? How you categorized? Mitigation? Or? What else? Mitigation is one part. What else? 
issues adaptation you can do. What is difference between these two? Climate mitigation and climate adaptation? Mitigation is mitigate. Mitigation means? Before and after. Which one is before? Both are before. Mitigation means we are trying to stop climate change itself. We don't want climate change. So we will try to reduce impact, all this 1.5 degree global warming should be less than that. All this comes under mitigation effect. Adaptation means what? Anyway, climate change is happening. We will do such things to reduce the damage, to reduce the impact, all this. One example side of this? Yeah, resilience initiative, disaster <laughs> related. This small island state, what they are claiming? Anyone go through COP27? Even IR we told, right, to make one, maybe you will not get questions like this. COP26 was little very big issue, big matter. So that's why direct question came. COP27 not that big, so direct question may not come, but still it can be used in many answers. So have you gone through it? Have you made half page note or five, six points regarding it? <laughs> that you can do anyway. <coughs> At least three, four points keep in hand. If somebody asks three points, if you have, you can manage the answer. So what is island states issue, what they are demanding? What is their objective, mitigation or adaptation? Both, mainly adaptation. They are like, yes, yes, yes. One major controversy in COP27 was fund regarding Loss and damage. Who are asking for this fund? Island nations. They are like, they are the first one who is going to be impacted. An example, island nation? Seychelles, Maldives, all these countries. Caribbean. Sri Lanka is a little big. Smaller one will be first impacted. Maldives like these ones. So, they are asking for loss and damage fund. And who is opposing it? Developed. Developed countries, US and all this. And why US is opposing? What is the base for asking this such a fund or such a money from other nations? Say, say. Climate justice, Climate justice historical responsibility. Developed countries are the major one who polluted the atmosphere. They are responsible more for the climate, whatever climate change is happening. And these island nations are anyway not at all responsible for this. But they are taking the grant of it. So, they are asking for fund. And US and other countries were opposing this fund for a long time. But in COP27, this fund has been materialized to some extent. Even though it may not be a grand fund, but some steps has been taken in this regard. What else, what else was other major issue in COP27? There was one issue regarding India. That is COP26. In COP26, we discussed it somewhere. China, India, or some of these countries, earlier the perspective was phase out of coal. Now slowly diluted it to phase down of coal. That is it happened in COP26. And there were a lot of criticism against it. But when it came to 27, what happened? <coughs> India proposed one thing. Why just coal? Why just coal? There are other 
petroleum products, crude oil, all this, diesel, petrol, natural gas, all this. Why just phase out or phase down of coal? So India's claim was not just phase out, phase down of coal, phase down of everything, petroleum products. And who supported India? EU supported India. EU was one country which opposed all the developed countries. That was usually, it doesn't see all these guys are together, but EU supported India's claim. But all other countries stonewalled it and nothing in now outcome happened. But this was one big controversy during COP27. Got the idea? Phase down of coal into from the phase down of all petroleum products. <clears throat> Anything else? Anything interesting regarding COP27 you remember? Climate finance, 100 billion dollars. That's agreement came in 2010. It's very old now. In 2010, it was agreed. By 2020, by 2020 per year, 100 billion dollars will be mobilized from developed countries to developing countries for climate mitigation, all these efforts. But anyway, it doesn't happen. And India was everyone saying we need some mechanism X, Y, Z to implement this. It's still not happening. Hua nahi means talk to hua, but come to hua nahi. Some steps have been taken, some improvement, some exaggeration of funds, like 250 billion dollars by 2040. Next target is coming, but in process, nothing credible has happened. Anything else? We'll see, we have one slide for it. So how you address this question? India will be demanding, that's all. Process. How you address this question? Back to COP26. Very much factual, it's very difficult to exactly fit any thinking process that you can add a question came in this year also remember economy may think there is one target it is 500 gigawatt renewable energy by which year 2030 so there was a question i think this year 2022 may is it india going to achieve or not india had one target before this what was that Before that, 175 gigawatt by 22 this year. What is status? Actually, this is the, was not having large hydro projects when it was set. Without large hydro, where are we? Something like 115, 120 gigawatt around this figure we are today without large hydro. Now we include large hydro also, it will become 160 something, 160 plus gigawatt. So, so. anyway, somewhere we have reached somewhere. <clears throat> it's not like if you look at the last five year growth, it's tremendous. And from that basis, you can say we may reach the 500 also. It may look very ambitious, but considering how solar are growing last four or five years, it's not totally out of reach. It depend on so many factors. This is hydrogen is what is hydrogen? Green hydrogen, all this. Actually, no question came from green hydrogen. This year also no question, right? From which part? Economic part. In environment, I don't see. Green hydrogen is some topic you should prepare. Not this year, it can come. What is green hydrogen? Hydrogen using electricity from renewable energy. Hydrogen produced using electricity from renewable energy. Solar will be used 
that energy we are using to production of hydrogen. And what this hydrogen is used for? All this application it can use. So, so many aspects is going on regarding this. So many big companies are there in group, all these are investing massively for this. Maybe when you are preparing renewable energy, prepare this thoroughly. <coughs> Rest, we will discuss this question. Don't give too much importance on small, small facts. COP26 is, game is over. Only the basic funda and basic structure you keep to know. Rest, small facts doesn't matter. Came that year, that's why we have some discussion. <coughs> so, have you introduced this question? Why is COP26 very much relevant? One context of it was IPCC sixth assessment report. Have you gone through the report, anyone? At least make a one page data sheet of it. Report is too bulky. It may not be feasible. Go to this site. This is some site which will give a summary, executive summary of the report. So, take their executive summary. It will be still long. Make at least a one page or half page data points from this. Any renewable energy question, most of it, you have, you can cite this report. Biodiversity question. So many questions, you can cite the data. So, environment note making you are doing, just make a half page or one page data points from this report. <coughs> Code. No, no, it is like, it is sixth one. First one came in 1990s maybe. So, it comes not frequently. Yes, yes. <coughs> Seventh will take so many years. So, sixth you can put for next year and that next that year also. So, what the report is saying? Code red for humanity. What does it mean? Whatever you are doing, it is not sufficient. Paris Agreement, whatever all these talks are going, so many big talks are going, but in the end of, at the end of the day, this work is not enough. Anyway, we are going to cross all this 1.5 degree Celsius limit of global warming within early 2030s. That was too close. Within 10 years, you are going to close it. That was something like why it is called code red for humanity. <clears throat> what is tri tripping point? Not exactly asking what is the degree. What does it mean? <laughs> Irreversible. Very major changes may happen after this, once we cross these tripping points. And tripping points may not be 1.5 degree, it may be less than that also. So, we have, any time is left to take any action, that is now. That was this report all about. And after that, we had pandemic, so talks were not happening. Something was delayed. And after pandemic, the major talk was Glasgow 26. So, due to many reasons, it got very much importance. This is another data. <coughs> For 1. Point degree, 1.5 degree Celsius, if you want to limit, have any chance of limiting global warming within this, we should decrease emissions by 45 percent from 2010 levels by 2030. Is that feasible? Let's see. <laughs> but in the next part, major part of this COP26, what are you include? Keep 1.5 alive. That was major objective of this COP26, all the talks. <coughs> what is this Paris Agreement ratchet mechanism? This is like prelims question. What does it mean, ratchet mechanism? What does Paris, Paris Agreement did? What was major outcome of Paris Agreement, 2015? What was the mechanism for that to limit X, Y, Z? INDC came out. What is INDC? What is it? 
instead of one person sitting on top and deciding everyone's target, that mechanism was done in Kyoto Protocol. In Kyoto Protocol, the authority was giving targets for each countries. So when we, from there we reach, this was implemented in 2002, I guess. When we reached 2015, this centralized system was gone. Every country decided its own targets and the target should be ambitious. And this is voluntary, nobody is forcing, no penalty system is there. And India had its own INDC targets. And what is ratchet mechanism is this target will be reviewed after five years and new targets will be set after every five years. Why this? So we can have a realistic check on where we are going. If we keep a 15 year target then we will wait till 15 years for something XYZ is happening or not. So every five years we will review the target and we will keep a more ambitious target. That is ratchet mechanism. So when the Paris Agreement came 2015, so it's been crossed five years. So there is a need for new targets to come up. What else? <coughs> so countries had came up with new targets and UNEP gap report, it is saying that the new target will help towards 0.2 degrees reduction of global warming. That will, sorry. It's working. So this is by end of century. What else? Sectoral deals means? We discussed on coal. Phase down of coal, phase out of coal. Similarly, we have for methane, we have for deforestation. All this was also included into the ambit of Paris Agreement. <coughs> Glasgow Pact, what it was? Similar like ratchet mechanism, we need more ambitious, we need countries to do more. Something like forcing countries to take up more ambitious targets. <coughs> Glasgow Dialogue, loss and damage fund that we talked, the dialogue was going on last, last year also. This year some kind of fund has been utilized. <laughs> adaptation, double the adaptation finance. If you look at the climate funding, there is high bias, bias towards war, mitigation or adaptation. If you look at how countries are spending the climate fund, there is high bias towards which, adaptation or mitigation? Most of the 80% above fund are spent towards mitigation efforts. Adaptation is something lagging, so <clears throat> there is some kind of push for this. Then we have phase down of coal. Phase out was replaced by phase down. This was the center of controversy. <coughs> so these are like hard facts. If you, this was very much relevant that time. That's why it came in paper also. Don't study this and go for next exam. Something which is relevant on news, if some new mechanism has came up, prepare the facts on that. <coughs> Anything new has came up recently? Any new mechanism, any new organization regarding environment. Look out for it. Something which is very much in news, that thing you have to prepare for that year. COP26, if you are preparing, just go through the overall idea. How the debates are going, face down, face out. How the loss and damage, some dialogue was going on before also. For the last 10 years, you look at the COP, some dialogue regarding loss and damage was going on. And developing con developed countries are stonewalling it every time. That's why it's not being implemented. So the process to have a continuation, you go through it. Rest each and every facts, that's not that much relevant for time being. What else? <coughs> this is COP27 short notes. Three basic things. Implementation plan, that was the whole agenda of this. The whole talk of COP27 began by demand for, we already have ambitious targets, we have beautiful plans. 
where we are lacking is we are lacking in implementation. So some push should be given towards implementation of this. Take pick together if you want. <coughs> what happened? Okay. Okay, this is somewhere around the lines what we have talked so far. <coughs> Work program, all this you can see everything is focus is on doing something for implementation. Idea is COP27 started with focusing more on implementation and that is a primary idea. <coughs> Go ahead. What is India's targets? What these are called? Panchamrit. What are five targets? Do learn this. Some more you can cite in still in you may come handy. Maybe direct question still may not come. <coughs> Take pick. So five hundred gigawatt by two thousand thirty. Today we have one sixty. We need to triple it. What else? Fifty percent of requirement from renewable energy. How much is this? Nearly forty percent. Maybe less, just less than forty percent. One third slightly. Four thirty. How much it comes? Thirty-five to forty percent, something in that. So pushing it to 50% that may be very much feasible, 10% you have to cover up. But this 500, this is little bit very ambitious. In 7, 8 years you have to triple the, maybe 8%, above 8% per year growth should be achieved for this. What else? How this is done? What is the initiative for this? Deforest, afforestation. What is the initiative for this global initiative? Red, red plus all these things. India has a separate fund for this also. What is carbon intensity? GDP per capita, how much is the carbon emissions happening? We already, we had a previous target, what was it? 35%, we already crossed that. So except 500, all these targets are very much feasible. Now come to net zero. What is India's year for net zero? What does net zero means? Does it mean absolute no emission? Then? How, how, how? Forest, soil, so somewhere the emitting carbons and the carbon that is sequestrated naturally as well as artificial also that will become equal that is net zero. Now where this net zero is coming? Almost every country has declared some kind of net zero targets. Where this is coming? That is also coming from the IPCC report, sixth assessment report. Two basic things which were, we discussed one thing, 45% reduction from 2010 level to by 2030. Another thing is by mid-century, everyone should reach this net zero. This was another criteria from the, in the same report. So India was selected for net zero for a long while. When India was declared this target, this came in COP26, when it was? November 2021. By that time almost all countries, at least developed countries had their own net zero targets. Many countries have lesser targets like which one? Japan, 40, some countries have 40s also. So why India was reluctant to net zero? We need to burn more coal for our developmental needs. That is one argument. What more? Um, 
historically india how much india contributed 3% around excess co2 in the atmosphere from after the industrial revolution if you check india contributed around 3% what is us contribution 25% around so you can see the contrast historical responsibility is one part of it still there were other reasons india were opposing it per capita emission of india is one third of global and india's per capita emission who said will never reach that of developed countries who told this manmohan singh somebody i forgot who India's per capita income, some COP or some meeting in climate, India's per capita greenhouse gas emissions will never reach that of today's developed countries level. <coughs> that is kind of true. We have huge population and we are already transitioning to renewable energy. So, what else? What is other criticism of this net zero? You have something? Any other criticism of net zero? deliberate attempt to buy technologies, nuclear technology like this. <coughs> what else? Uh, Developed countries? Technology, you are speaking of technology, forcing their technology on developing countries. Anything else? Climate justice. Climate justice is historical responsibility, right? <clears throat> what else? India one argument was not just net zero is not that much important, pathway is more important. What is pathway? Net zero you reach by 2070. And by 2070, if 2060 you are emitting so much of coal and by 2070 you reach net zero, that makes little sense. Suppose your greenhouse emission is today's this much, you reach to reach here, you can reach like this, you can reach like this also. So India is saying it is more important we follow this path instead of this path. <coughs> So pathway is more important, having a target that is two, three decades ahead, that is not the more going to make difference. Even though the target is three decades ahead. So even by checking or cross checking, that will take too long and by the time everything will be over. <coughs> so these are different criticism of, all these are valid, I am not invalidating any of this. <coughs> so the countries, China by 2060. US 50, India by 70, all these countries, almost every country is today have these net zero targets some year. Go ahead. Way forward you can add, if you are writing the answer you can include way forward, no issues. Otherwise finish the answer with some conclusion X, Y, Z. <coughs> we need something more. COP27, all it is saying is, whatever planning we are doing, it is great. What we need is stringent implementation. So whenever you are writing conclusion, connect it with COP27, connect it need for better implementation, stringent implementation, checking monitoring system, all this bring into your focus. Write COP27, that will give credibility to whatever you are writing. <clears throat> okay, move ahead, next question, it is very easy, what it is, describe the benefits of deriving electric energy from sunlight in contrast to the conventional energy generation, 
what are the initiatives offered by our government for this purpose? So tell me what are different parts you are going to divide this? It is how much? 15 marks. <laughs> so, <coughs> benefits of sunlight, electric energy, after that, government initiatives. Any other subdivision? Way forward. Any other? That when you are writing benefit, you can compare it with the renewable energy, conventional coal and all, you can contrast. Don't, no need to make it a separate section. <coughs> Anyone has any other, any other dimension in this answer? You have written benefits, you have made two box. You have written benefits itself or you have... I have written benefits itself Let me check. So what he has done is he has made a box, conventional and solar energy. Is this right approach? You are not asked to compare, you are not asked to do this. I am still not saying it is fully wrong, but if some question compare, contrast, they are directly asked. In that question you should do this exercise. Let me check. If you have written all benefits itself, then it is still okay. <clears throat> high cost, high initial cost, low cost in production, safe and resilient. Okay. Focus should be more on benefits, not on the comparing aspect of it. Anything else? Anyone did, did something more? Before way forward, you will write issues. Before government initiative, you are including issues. Make it short, all this, whatever you are writing. It's a 50 mark, a three mark, three page. You have some liberty of space. So, include kar sakta Anything else? So, yeah, what do you give for introduction? Here also, most introduction we are giving is directly data. So you have to prepare all the data. How much is wind? How much is solar? How much is biogas? Hydrogen? All these renewable energy which are in use, collect data and prepare for it. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. So, India has an installed capacity of solar of 60 gigawatt. And how is exact breakup of this? How much is solar? How much is wind? But some flexibility is also given. Exact, earlier 175 was there. There was exact division. 100 for solar, 60 for wind, small hydro, this much, all this. Here exact categorization is fully not given, some flexibility is given. It's quite long target also, 2030. What else? India's current capacity is around this much. Renewable energy potential in India is 1000 gigawatt. And if you want to get this 500 gigawatt, out of potential 50% you have to somehow capture. India ranks third in Renewable Energy Attractive Index 2021. The point of giving all this is, while you are making notes on renewable energy, data is something too important. Keep data for every, every aspect of it. Even argument without data you cannot substantiate. <clears throat> like in security we have some other examples. So many jaga examples will work. This here it is quite difficult. You will need to have data. 
okay so how you address this benefits of solar energy one approach is divided based on stakeholders how it helps in climate mitigation how it helps in different kind of national interest of india and how it helps individual stakeholders you can include private parties also other stakeholders also into it it's not end in itself <clears throat> so think on these lines what are climate mitigation aspects here it is written that life cycle emission of carbon solar is 37 times less than coal why it is so is solar 100% no emission should i off <coughs> off karu yeah why it is told that what is this life cycle emission of solar power plant is 37 times less than coal you are getting it right how much a solar plant is emitting is 37 times less than coal coal how it is emitting we all know coal burning it, there will be emissions how solar is emitting solar panels all these metals extraction all this will take some kind of emissions that's why it is called life cycle emission life cycle means it towards everything till the dismantling decommissioning of the plant <coughs> running mein koi pollution ka baat nahi hai no pollution during running less water intensive nuclear you know it requires so much of water many nuclear plants are near ocean it takes so much of water also it dumps so much of heat water also take pick <clears throat> what is national interest how will you connect with national interest neva one thing is what is india's biggest energy issue dependency on imports how much petroleum products is imported 80% 85% something between this high dependence on yes not conventional import dependence on for energy needs that is one challenge india is facing and this solar can be a solution to it what is what is atnc losses transmission losses basically <clears throat> and how why solar is having very less transmission losses it can be decentralized yes yes if we compare with other plants something like large hydro it can only be hill, installed in hilly areas and you have to transport all this electricity down to here but solar you have the advantage of wherever the demand is you can place it there rooftop <coughs> off grid plants micro grid plant what does it mean that will be taking like five homes 10 homes solar <coughs> units there are some famous companies in this also some students who are working heard of it in rajasthan i guess startups fdi fdi source it can be job generation 2 lakh plus jobs already created in fy21 solar diplomacy what is it example is international solar alliance can site it can attract more investment all this cdm what is cdm clean development mechanism something like foreign countries will invest in india and developing countries so there is huge investment potential in all renewable energy like so many fund green climate fund 
GCC, all these are created only for this investment in renewable energy. <coughs> you can connect. Renewable energy is of course having so much investment potential compared to coal. Coal, like if World Bank is giving some loan, they may not be interested in giving loan for coal. Anyway, they will not give for coal. They will be against it. But if it is for other renewable energy, any of this, then they can be mobilized. <coughs> what else? These are, you can make it up. So one as, aspect to it, you need some data, at least in some points. If not in all points, at least four or five points, you need some data to substantiate the argument. <coughs> Otherwise, it's, it's, everyone will write this answer. Ten points in advantages of solar, it's not a big deal. <coughs> Material. What raw material? Like yeah, comparing with conventional. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. This also take lot of land, solar. Solar due to coal, coal mining, all these issues. You can connect. Very good. How will you divide the answer? Operational, what you told? No, I am saying, here we are thinking from different perspectives. What other way you can think to generate points? Transmission, you are dividing like? Yeah, production. Transmission. What else? Distribution. <coughs> what is biggest issues of solar? Eighty percent solar panel imported from China. What else? Land acquisition. Temporal variance is very much important. Night you don't have any generation. What is the issue with this? Like in solar and wind, wind is also not available 24 into 7. Only certain months, certain period you get the power. In solar also, all night is you are not getting power. What is the issue with this? Grid integration become very difficult. Grid means it has to manage Incoming and outgoing are somehow managed. So if you are not getting so much solar is coming into picture and you are not getting anything incoming in the night, then grid integration, it has to manage from other sources. Coal doesn't have any such issues. If it is running, it will be running continuously. <coughs> what other issues of solar? High dust, dust, all these factors. If anything, put a little shade on the solar panel, then efficiency drops very drastically. 50%, 40% efficiency will be lost by a single layer of dust. What else? Patent controversy. Patent controversy regarding? Yes, yes, WTO case. That was local agreement. What was it he is saying? What was the case regarding the Jawaharlal Nehru solar mission? That case, right? Scheme was there and government, yeah, government was implementing some percent of acquisition should come from Indian MSMEs, Indian companies. So US countered that and India lost that case. That is exactly not a demerit of solar. What else? Initial cost is very high. 
ठीक है वट एल्स If you think like this, what is the end of solar power plant? There is some data like by from 2026, how much is life of a solar panel? 20 years, 25 years. So after 25 years, you need to recycle it. And this all recycling mechanism is still not established, not just in India, in many countries. <coughs> so anything else? thermal pollution how how heat island like that okay okay over solar panels also it is where you are speaking this coal okay how it is solar how it is related advantage you are speaking okay okay this issue is water being recycled it will be dumped to some water bodies lake or river and there will be destruction of the biodiversity this is very much issue in nuclear also nuclear so many plants are around the coastal areas which plant example Kudankulam, everything is Maharashtra, Tarapur, all these are in coastal areas. So they are taking water from ocean and they are dumping the water in the ocean back. And the dumping water will be high temperature, not the steam temperature, but 50 degree, 60 degree, enough to destroy the biodiversity to some extent. Anything else? We don't have capacity. 80 percent of the imported from China itself. Go ahead, what are government schemes for this? How will you divide is you can divide like this, grid connected schemes, then off grid schemes, then something like, what is Surya Mitra program? Training program, it is something like skill, skill India. Related to Skill India mission, people will be trained on how to operate the solar panel or these equipments. What is PLI scheme? How much it is? 19.5k crore for production of solar modules. So, what is the idea of the PLI scheme? What does it do? Speak something. What, what? Domestic production. Domestic production. Hmm. Suppose a company is producing this much today, whatever, this much today, if it produce this much after say, say 5 years and for this extra production there will be some incentives. And what, what will be the incentives? This can be tax rebates basically, import duty excess, export duty may, something like that. <coughs> and how much is the PLI scheme, whole scheme? How many sectors are involved? Today I think 14 sectors are there. How much is total, total fund for it? Much more than that, 2 lakh crore. Around 1.97 lakh crore exact figure, something like that. So the idea is which sector we apply this? What is the criteria? Which all sector? Like automobile is there, silicon, what else? This electronics fabrication, design, all these sectors are there. So what is the basic criteria? Where there is MSME presence. It's not required in chip manufacturing. Where is MSM? <laughs> it is not provided to, not necessarily to MSMEs. Majorly big companies are taking the advantage. <clears throat> what what should be the criteria? 
thing is this should go like this what is this whatever the company is producing suppose it is mobile manufacturing you should foresee a very high demand in the future there should be some high demand in the future in other sectors if you go and implement outcome will be not effective in in, in this 14 sector itself many sectors are not being picking up it will only work when the demand is going to grow exponentially and what else we have some manufacturing issues our pricing system is very high at some point if you give some incentives we can reduce the price and that will push the demand something like this we already have a market alteration in this issue in solar if you take 85 percent panels are coming from china so we have some market issues in pharmaceuticals similar cases there. regarding what apis high dependence on it is also coming from china so we have some market bias already existing and the pharmaceutical also demand should be high in future also so when these two criteria are coming together we club it and implement pli all these schemes i say i don't think we need to talk so, yes yes we are return it somewhere interstate interstate inter inter <coughs> what is this if electricity is buying between state there will be tax there will be other provisions other charges also so for renewable energy all these are waived it was till 2022 and it will be extended for 27 like that for a foreseeable future okay So that's it. What is these new two ideas are discussed here? Solar wind hybrid and solar to hydrogen power production. What does it mean? What is solar wind hybrid? What what is the relevance of it? Temporal differences we need to reduce it. In night, if wind is working, then there can be some level of <coughs> And solar to hydrogen, this is same as green hydrogen. Use of solar energy to produce hydrogen. How we produce hydrogen? Can be splitting of water, it can be splitting of methane also. <coughs> so these two are coming up. So this can be offshore also. not necessarily onshore it only it can go offshore also and there are some schemes specifically for offshore being recently in news <coughs> india's offshore targets are very low if you look at wind india offshore is very less compared to onshore so there are some government initiatives to push this aspect also move ahead to next question Try to link it with some government scheme if it is not asked. Not in this question I am saying. If question is not asked, government vision, try to connect it with like some every question COP27 you do not have to write. So connect it with what is being discussed in COP27. What is being this global level, something like that. Some future vision you have to connect with. If India is like we have the Panjamri targets. You will not use it. It will not directly asked in any question, most probably. So you can use that in conclusion itself. It's a workbook needed. I think afterwards. Now I don't get time to prepare this itself. <coughs> keywords, keywords. I think more important in this more than security. There are so many keywords like co-production, co-generation, 3E, that I can think of. Let me see. So one third question. Yeah, with growing energy needs, India should keep on expanding its nuclear energy program. Discuss the facts and fears associated with nuclear energy. So have you addressed this? What are different parts? 
there is a direct question should india do this or not where is he here you have opportunity to make a box india should do it india should not do it and what is more important you generate four five points here generate four four points here don't leave the analysis as such give your opinion directly it is asked should india continue with the nuclear program or not don't leave it with the analysis give your opinion india should do or should not do take a stance in these kind of questions <clears throat> what will be the other part how to address this facts and fears you will use some here also how to how to address this part complex it made little complex otherwise nuclear energy it's a very direct easy question some difficulty due to this facts and fears how to address this part tell me issue is repetitive it can be repetitive here whatever examples you are using that can come here no make your example use kar right can come here how to address this you are written this first you don't box for this kya hai it's just nuclear energy we are discussing You had in run down box, no box. <laughs> Not this box. I am asking like the last time. This question can had a scope to draw box. You had in done it, and last question you begin off this if you have issues. Okay, okay. Yeah. So how you address this last part? Tell me. I'm asking you. How you address these facts and fears? Anything else? Anyone has done anything new? One thing here you can put some case studies. write little bit in detail here you will be only citing one example one data and you will be leaving it there when writing in facts and fears give a little more into it do some case studies which is famous case studies chernobyl seen that tv series should watch for five episode only Chernobyl it's very good Chernobyl when it happened when when uh, 19 86 <coughs> so what happened something exploded plant exploded and how is the area now whole area is covered with xyz thick concrete wall and all these things what next fukushima why fukushima happened earthquake then came tsunami and both these happened together and <coughs> it failed what was the risk due to this bigger risk it is in coastal area fukushima so whatever the water they are taking in all this water got polluted radiant radioactive water they are dumping it in pacific ocean so what we are thermal pollution we are discussing radiation pollution was having a capability to impact in much bigger scale sir example like atp here hota hai nuclear power plant mainly emission like why we'll discussing next part 
So how you address the introduction? There is one term like growing energy needs. So how much India's energy is growing to be in future? Something, remember 8% growth, 7%, 9% growth, that is correct. Take something which is you can much more easily remember. Double by 2040 or triple by 2050 if you can get some data like that. Cite an organization and remember it. Take. Whichever is easy, you remember that. It's not, it's up to you. Now, how is India's breakup of energies? 50% it is coming from coal. Hydro, 11%. Renewable, we have something like this, 28.3. Last time, we told that around 40% is renewable. Why here 28%? Large hydro is usually not considered as a renewable. So, if it is separated, it becomes 28 point XYZ, otherwise nearly 40 percent. Nuclear, how much it is? 1.6 percent only. And we are expecting by 2027, it will pick up to 2.2 percent. And in next five years, it becomes 22 gigawatt and 2.5 percent. That means three times, now we have around 7 gigawatt. So, we, in next 10 years, we are trying to triple it. So this is India's nuclear mission. This is how energy is growing. <coughs> so what is next part? Issues and other things. Positive. What are positives of nuclear energy? Don't look there and discuss it. Low emission. Compared to coal and other natural gas, all these. Energy density, you are speaking. Long term cost is very less. What else? Raw material. We are discussing positives. Very much less amount of raw materials is required. In six months, you need to change fuel once and it will run continuously, non-stop. What else? There is no intermittency. Like in solar, wind, things are like season, off-season issues. This has no such issues. If it is running, it will be running forever. So like base load, it can handle very efficiently. And when whichever new plant it is, when there is variation in load, then with how much it is variation, the efficiency drops. If a plant is made to operate at 70% operating level capacity, efficiency will be dropping more than 70%. In nuclear, what happened is, they are not built for this variation, variation handling. It will be usually designed for base load and continuously it can operate above 90% operating level. What else? What are other advantages? We have huge reserves of thorium, where? Black sand in Kerala and all. Monocyte. So we have, one, do we have any thorium plant? Does any, anywhere in the world we have thorium plants? Still under construction, every plant is still uranium only. <coughs> but once in future it came into being, India has huge potential. Because we have thorium reserves. What else? What do you have written something? Huh? Here also you did in made box. <laughs> for coal, for all this, we have indigenous technology. We are discussing benefits, right? How to become, we, do we have indigenous nuclear technology? But most of the bigger plants are coming from outside. No, Kudankulam is from Russia, right? Toshiba. Toshiba is building the plant itself, technology, everything. We have indigenous technology for small plants. Tarapur, some plants we have indigenous, we have the capacity. 
but the bigger plans, ambitious plans, whatever we have put together all this 22 gigawatt by 2032, major part of it is coming from outside. Is Toshiba still there? There was some crisis going on with the company. Let's see. Anything else? Emission intensity is 3% that of coal. It's very less. Solar we told something like 37 times less than coal. Take, take, please. What is this rising safety standards? In whole history, only few accidents are there. Even though we cannot look, overlook it. Why? <laughs> what else? Yeah, plan B come eh? Compared to coal, we have lots of plans. What else? Impact can be very catastrophic. Coal means how much is maximum impact? There will be personal loss there. There will be money loss there. Then power generation will be dismantled for X number of days. But here if something accident in bigger magnitude happen, then you have to cover that whole area for maybe decades. <clears throat> if radiation goes out, then it can go to any extent. So the risk of accident is very high. It can be something like humanitarian crisis. To that level, it can go ahead. So that's why so much. And after Fukushima, so many countries are facing out nuclear. Which countries? Germany, Germany was in forefront. They are facing out all this nuclear. Most developed, many developed countries, they are not installing nuclear plants for a long time, including USA or this. What China is doing? China and India is in the forefront. We are like, we are saying, we'll follow same path. After maybe 20 years, we also realize it is a bigger risk. Then they are putting in technology on us. Yeah, you can write it as a criticism. They are phasing out the same technology they are giving to India. And <coughs> Installation process is lower. How many years put on Kulam work was going on? 10 years. Uh, due to protest also, but still it is very slow. Recently, there is one news on some plant in Rajasthan, there were some leakages. Not radioactive leakage, that's why it didn't become a big issue. Non-radioactive, some leakages were there, helium leakage, something like that. A nuclear plant, somewhere in Rajasthan. So what happened is, to correct it, it took huge amount of time. If some maintenance came out, this plant is designed like that, it will run continuously without any disturbance. But if some XYZ failure comes out inside the technology or inside the equipment, then correction process is very slow. It requires a lot of safety checks. It requires a lot of other technologies. So all this becomes very difficult. What else? Technology, all these transfers, many things are coming from outside world. High capital cost, initial cost is very high. Even though operational after life cycle cost, it may be less. And it is said that like the plants which we are installing from outside technology with this Toshiba and all, they are three times more costly than indigenous. If India can do it on its own, it, it is three times less costlier. Fuel availability. Is uranium available in India? We are mostly importing, trying to import from Australia, Canada. Australia Kazakhstan, these countries. Central Asia, we discussed energy diplomacy, that question. You can put that. Kazakhstan is having largest reserves. Yeah, Australia. Kazakhstan. Production is largest in Australia. So, waste disposal. How it is? Waste is disposed, not water waste, the other radioactive waste, how we are disposing right now? Pellets karke? Where we put it? We 
we cover it like with concrete so that radiation doesn't come out then where we put it put something like inside the ocean holes are made like hundreds or nearly one kilometer holes then we are putting all this inside now what is today it is a nuclear waste but in future it can be like it can be used as a nuclear fuel also today we don't have xyz technology so we can maybe future take it out and use it to some any extent risk of accident is very high this is the biggest issue or the protest of anti nuclear <coughs> aspect and so what stance will you take we should do it we should do it with water conditions safety protocol should be implemented anyone saying it should be phased out everyone is okay with yeah whatever so how to address this these are this one is interesting picture what does it shows death per 1000 terawatt hour of electricity production and coal is having highest deaths potentially nuclear is the lowest one time happened it is <laughs> that is true to some extent but still with available data coal is the highest killer and how coal kills <coughs> silicosis is from mining to burning it is creating issues yeah so fact and figures you cite some case studies chernobyl how much people are being impacted how much is the impact of all these cost of all these this is 5 million plus people you can also post cost cost aspect some accident has happened the cost becomes unmanageably high <coughs> take it Yeah, move ahead. This is you'll manage yourself. You're taking pick. What else? Last question. Explain the purpose of Green Grid Initiative at the World Leaders Summit of the COP26. UN climate change conference glasgow blah, blah blah when was this idea first floated in the international solar alliance it was very objective question how will you address when you can think on these lines it is one sun one what is it one sun one world one grid that is put forward by isa when isa is formed So some years after that, 15 is too early, right? After 15, check. Announcement पहले हुआ था. But the initiative is of that grouping, ISA. So ISA is not that much old. So some years after that, and exact year is also you can overlook. Not idea, the grouping. Okay, okay, sit, sit. Prelims sharp. Write something about ISA. Write something more. What they are doing. Thing is, the question is very objective. First part of the question you should write, even if you don't exactly remember what is. At least this much you should remember. Green Grid Initiative is same as 
ones and one over one grid. After that, if something is like this is the purpose of it, you should write, irrespective of how much you know, how much you learned or not. Then exact when it was formed, when it was discussed. If you know exact date, you write it. If you don't know, connect it with ISA. On that lines, you write it. Connect it with ISA is best thing. It is written here also. COP, if you can remember, like COP 15, 2015 COP. No, no, that is in 26. We are speaking about ISA, Solar Alliance. Green Grid Initiative, it is here written now. It is in 26 COP. That idea is that grid idea, whole world one grid initiative idea. Green grid initiative specific thing came in COP 26, but the idea of this was going on previously. So ISA was leading it, one and one world one grid initiative. So the idea ISA ke baat ISA After forming ISA, then it came. What are different parts? First, it's a 10 marker, so there is some. And the, what is asked? Introduction, you will write what is Green Grid Initiative, what it is, or something you can connect with COP26 or this. Then, what is first major part? Purpose of Green Grid Initiative. After that, If you remember this, when the idea was floated, address it. Limitations way forward if you have something to put forward, you put forward. But keep it all limited. Focus mainly on purpose. This should be main part of your answer. Okay? You done something else? Anyone? Which you can, why you are writing? I say it's not asked right. It's very, very objectively asked. The difficulty is that some keyword other was there, discuss, analyze, examine, anything else we can play around. All this become relevant. When it is asked, when it is formed, discussed in ISA, then writing too much on ISA, other initiatives, it's not. Better don't write two page itself. That is be better thing to do. If you can draw a map of it and show how that how what we will show in map. Tropics, countries, and connect something like that. If you can do that, it will occupy some space. Otherwise, don't write two pages. That is also a possible option to it. <coughs> Go ahead. So, this is writing about what is the initiative. <laughs> Launched at this by India and UK, Global Interconnected Solar Energy System. What is the idea? Take pick. What is the idea of Green Grid Initiative? At least there will be sunlight on some area every time. So connect all the grid in the world such that energy generation will be done in those areas where there is sunlight. And demand, if the grid is interconnected, wherever demand happen, it can <coughs> getting. In India itself, in India itself, if you remember previously, there were so many grids, <coughs> western, eastern, central, northern, southern. We had different, different grid. Yeah, forget it. So now, now what we have? One grid. Now we are operating in one grid, one country system. 
So what is the advantage of it? Surplus like western, there will be high surplus because Rajasthan, all these no major cities. If Mumbai is included, then situation may change. But in southern, there will be less production, only hydro is there. <coughs> so that misbalance all can be managed within one country with one grid. <coughs> now in whole world, it happens. What is advantage? Economies of scale. That is not exactly here. Still, the point is, you can manage the whole world demand and supply system. Okay. Move ahead. What is purpose of the initiative? How will you address this? It's very difficult you to get even five points regarding it. <coughs> Take a pick if you want to gather. Basic idea is you need to get transition to renewables. Countries which doesn't have electric solar or doesn't have any capabilities of renewable energy resource they also need some plan to shift to renewables. So this op given option for those countries also. It's not necessary renewable is available in this your country. You can generate in other country, you can buy the power itself. So throughout the world transition to renewables, it gives a you know, very great opportunity. It's a very ambitious project if you consider. Like in which other countries the power grid is integrated? Maybe European countries may have. But in all other countries, it's very difficult. And you are speaking of a system where throughout these countries in tropics. And these countries are fighting in itself. India have next Pakistan. How you connect with Afghanistan without connecting Pakistan? So it's very challenging. At the same time, very ambitious project. <coughs> More than 80 countries, large geographical area has to be integrated into the system. <coughs> Same idea, like countries which are receiving low levels of sunlight or sunlight or other renewable energy is not available, they also should have a plan to have the transition to renewables. They also have, should have a plan to look beyond crude oil and all this. Grid, what is this grid resilience in extreme weather conditions? That is somewhere related to climate change. We have coal shortage. Remember? You're reading newspaper in this year. Coal shortage. So what was one issue regarding it? Why coal shortage happened? Multiple reasons. One thing, Coal India was the major supplier of coal. Beyond that, what was other issues? Because of floods, because of heavy monsoon in many parts of the country, coal mining was not ex happening as expected. That is one part. So many other part. External part, what was the issue? Import, high price of coal imports was, and imports was getting limited. So many factors concluded to become coal shortage. So similar issues, it can impact all this grid resilience, grid capacity, all this. So in that, if we have an integrated grid, these kind of disturbances can be better managed. <coughs> Circular economy, what does it mean? Whatever is the byproduct of XYZ processes, we'll use it for again. So here we are using the existing grid system. It's not like we are building a totally new grid. We are using whatever the grid is existing in these countries. We are integrating into only a governance mechanism is being put forward. <coughs> if it came out, it will be like, yes, very much great. <coughs> Move ahead. What is the other part of the question? When it was floated, when the idea? It's very difficult to remember exactly. Still, if you can connect something with when ISA is formed, so somewhere years after the ISA formation, it should have implemented. So 2018, the idea was floated. And when we reached 2022, COP26 and it became 
some level of materialization is happening. What else? Not putting too much time into it. If you can write a way forward, you can write. <coughs> you want to fill pages, you want to having very less content, otherwise exactly writing in the question, it's become very tough to fill two pages itself. You can include way forward also. Otherwise, that's it. So tomorrow we have all these topics. Prepare these and come. National, what it is? Clean air, clean air program, NCAP. Air quality guidelines of WHO. <coughs> EIA, draft EIA. What are the issues with draft EIA? Prepare those. I know, no. Drop kia. Act nahi kia. So there was a lot of criticism against this draft. Whatever the issues, you just go through it and come. So that's all for today. Thank you. Wait, wait, let me end this. Yeah, bolo. <coughs>